Welcome to Fancounters. My name's Nick. You can follow us on Twitter at Fancounters Live. Our big Facebook group is located on Facebook, obviously, by searching Fan Counters. Our little face group is a private group called Sharpie Nation. If you search for Sharpie Nation, just like the marker, we will let you in and you can talk about our show and our guests all in a private little community. So that's on Facebook. Uh, you can also email us if you have a guest that you want to hear on the show. Send it to us at hello at fancounters.com. On the show today, we've got Michael Simmons from Love After Lockup and also the new show that's premiering tonight on WeTV called Life After Lockup. He's going to talk to us about his experience being on the show, what it's been like to view his life on television after it's aired, and we'll hear about the new show on the program today. So we hope you are ready for a fast-paced interview with one of the stars of the biggest reality show on television, and it all starts right now. Coming to you from nowhere near the entertainment capital of the world, this is Fan Counters with Nick and Elizabeth on the Podfix Network. There was this mob of people, and they're screaming my name. Crazy fans. Stop following me. Don't come around my house. If you do the cops, are going to be at yours. If I'm having dinner with my wife, don't sit down at my table. Don't follow me into the bathroom. Can I take a picture? We're gonna, oh, my God. I think this guy wants to fight me. Ended up being a fan. I'm the only one that's ever been on Sam Jackson and lived to tell about it. <laughs> well, guess what? I have a big surprise for you. That's why we call it Fan Counters. <laughs> I don't think you're going to last on the air very long. <laughs> Michael Simmons, welcome to Fan Counters. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. How you doing? Oh, you bet. Uh, we're doing good. Elizabeth had to step out, so she's not going to be on the show with us, but I'm really glad that you're able to join us and uh, appreciate your time. Most oh, definitely. I appreciate y'all having me. So we talked about the show a little bit in our opening, but there's a new spinoff show tonight that starts tonight yes. called Life After Lockup. Now, are you a part of yes. those episodes? Yes, I am. I'm on the full season. Ah. Of life after lockup. Okay, so it yeah, I just signed a contract for that. So it kind of takes place following what we saw on the other show, on this new one, right? It yep. kind of does it pick right up where it left off. Yes, exactly. It picks straight up from the last episode, and everything moving forward from there. Now let's kind of go back to the beginning a little bit because you were incarcerated when this whole journey began to be on the show. So how did you get involved with it in the first place? Whose idea was it? Kind of give me a little behind the scenes of, of where your story was going to play out on television. Well, what happened was, was Megan, I was talking to Megan and she would tell me that she was watching the first season of the show and she would kept bringing it to my attention about the show. Just, you know, the things that she's seen on the show. And a couple months later, she had asked me if she could cast me. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I wasn't really thinking much of it. I had like six months left until yeah. I was going to be released. And then she kept, she put my gate on my information, and they instantly contacted me. And then we just took off from there. Now, did they know you were married as well? Is that what really captivated them, or, or had they not known that yet? No, initially, initially they didn't know that, that I was married. You know, when they was interested into me, all they, all they had was that the, the storyline of, you know, of they show. Okay. But initially after that, you know, I, off on the record, I had told him, like, you know, well, this is my life. This is what, what's going on with me for real. You know what I mean? And they were instantly, that's when they really was like, oh, my gosh, and this and this and that. Well, we know that television's all about the money, so they probably were seeing dollar signs in their eyes when you told them your story. <laughs> right. um, to us watching... It was like a real life love triangle that kind of played out right in front of our eyes. Did it feel that way to you or did it just feel like, you know, th these were situations you had to sort out? I felt like these were situations that I, I more or less had to sort out. You know, I, I, as you can see on the show, it had a lot to do with, you know, you know, emotions being tied in two separate directions. But, you know, not taking my full emotions into consideration, you know, trying to please. Now, I know that your current situation is something that's going to be addressed on the new episode, so we're not going to go into that. But if you could play out the situation differently from everything we've already seen, do you regret not telling Sarah right away about Megan? Would you have done that situation differently if you could go back in time? Well, you know, one of the things that the world doesn't know is that, you know, initially before I married Sarah, I told Sarah about Megan, 
And in, in the same way about with Megan, you know, I told her that, you know, I plan on marrying my daughter moms and I told her why she didn't agree. So what I would, what would I would do differently is that once I made, once I made the decision to say, yeah, I do, I should have went back to Megan and told her like, well, I know you probably didn't agree with what I was doing, you know, agree with the decision that I made, but I went forward in that decision because she never knew that I went forward in the decision. All she knew was that I told her about it. And, and with Sarah, it would be the same way. Like, um, like I said, I told her that I was talking to Megan. I told her I was going to continue to talk to Megan. But the difference is I told her that I, I lied to her because I told her I, I'm, I'm going to stop talking to Megan, and I did. So I would have played those two scenarios in that light, just being more honest and more blunt as soon okay. as it happened, you know? Yeah, now people have been real critical just in talking about the show, about the fact that you were having relations with both women kind of at the same time, or at least it felt like that to us because it was featured in the same episode. Um, How do you address the people that are like really hating on you based on what decisions you were making at the time? I try not to entertain a lot of the the things that people say uh, when it comes down to their opinion on that, on a relationship standpoint, because the way that I view it is that, you know, this life, you know, I was in a relationship with somebody who I loved. It didn't work out, but I try, I'm staying there for my child. I moved on with another woman, but I, I feared that, you know, me moving on with just cutting the ties, I wouldn't have contact with my children. You know what I mean? So it was more or less for me. It was the sacrifices that I was going to make. You know what I mean? I I was going to be in an unhappy relationship and deal with whatever I had to deal with just to be with my children. And if, and I feel like, if people can't respect that, then I don't really know what to tell them because mm-hmm. anybody who love love their kids or passionate about something, you know, that's what they're going towards. They're not trying to think about anything else. It'd be a lot of women and men in relationships and, and in my inbox and, and comments, and, you know, they say different things. But at the end of the day, everybody going through these different types of things. They might not be going through the whole situation that I'm going through, but uh, you can't be no female on my page talking about I'm cheating on my girl when you cheating on your dude or you in my <laughs> inbox trying to talk to me right you know what i mean yep so well i was gonna say i think that there are a lot of people who stay in relationships maybe that they shouldn't but they do it because yeah. they want to be near their kids with their kids and that kind of thing so i think a lot of people can understand that part of it as well when you look back at season two of the show that you were on were you happy with how the story was being portrayed are there details that we still don't know maybe that we're going to find out when you say, was I happy afterwards or during? Well, like when you're watching the show, are you like, oh, that that's not really how that happened? Or oh. I wish they wouldn't have portrayed it yeah. like that? Yeah, you know, it, it's a couple different scenes and different things that I wish wasn't portrayed in that light because that's not how it, it was. But the reality of it was, was that um, this is what happened, but it may not happen this way. And, that, and, and, it, and some of that stuff came back on me. But like I say, I'm... I take that, you know. Sure. I take that. <laughs> now you do have two wonderful children. I believe yeah. they're in New York and you're in Michigan, right? Yes, yeah, my pretty girl. Yeah, are you, are my you... little raindrop. No, do you get to see them often, or tell us what it's like and what you love most about being a father? One of the things that I love most about being a father is just knowing that, you know, I got two beautiful little girls who I'm responsible for their life. You know. They didn't have to be in this world, regardless of anything that me and their moms got going on. My my job is to make sure that they're just the happiest, you know, children they're out there, you know. And one of the things about like my little my daughter that's four, she is like identical to me. You know what I mean? That's like you look at her, you're gonna be looking at me. So looking into her eyes, I can see myself. You know. Yeah. And then moving forward, like I like I just had a little girl. She's only three months now. Wow. Um, I seen months. my daughter on her birthday. Her birthday just passed last month. We just threw her a big party. You know, we try our best to make sure that, you know, I have access to them. That is wonderful. As far as the, the, we talked a little bit about your haters, but, you know, I have seen these groups on Facebook specifically that are not kind to any of the cast members of the show and mm-hmm. certainly have a lot of nasty things to say about Sarah and Megan. And when you see mm-hmm. these negative things that are posted about 
people that you have or might still care about. How do you handle that? And do you think you're going to have to tell your kids, you know, like, are you going to, are you worried about having to shield them from this stuff later on? Honestly, when, when I first came home, I was able to, you know, really see what the social media world was talking about from Instagram to YouTube, uh, from Twitter. And I did witness like people saying little disrespectful things towards Sarah and towards Megan. And I have caught myself, like, even no matter what the situation was between me and Megan or the situation was between me and Sarah, like I caught myself defending them only on the point being to just stop, don't be disrespectful. I'm not never going back with forth from nobody on no type of social media. You know, that's not the type of person I am. But at the same time, you know, you can you can put all that little backlash on me. But at the same time, like, don't be you don't got to do that. Shit, huh? Yeah. As far as, you know, the, the extra stuff, the name calling, the, the you know, all that. Mm-hmm. Like that stuff is uncalled for. You're going to have your opinion. You may not like her or her. You may not like me. But, you know, all the threats and other stuff, like, let's, let's move that out the way. It's really funny how people can be so nasty online, and they wouldn't be like that in real life. We see it time oh, no. and time again. It's just really sad exactly. that, that we've turned into that kind of a society where we can just criticize and post pictures and name call and all this stuff and yeah. think we're not affecting and, people. Yes and, yes, and they do it from afar. You know, they do it from behind a phone or, you know, a computer. And that's and that's comfortable for them, but you know, as my daughters get older, um, I don't honestly I don't feel like I'm gonna have to shield my daughter from it. Like this was this was what was going on, but before my daughter's old enough to understand and show, like of course my daughters would been to had a conversation with me and her mom, their mm-hmm. mom, you know. Um, I, you know she's gonna get older, so she can Google it at any time. <laughs> You know how kids is with the, with the phones. Somebody be like, you know, they see her out and about already. Yeah. So, does she, does she, your daughter know that she's been on TV? Yeah, my daughter knows. She knows she uh, <laughs> She's she okay. Be going when she filming. Oh <laughs> she right, right. By herself, she she be running it the whole set. You know, that's what I actually did think about is I'm just asking you questions based on a viewer, but you're right. The cameras are there. She's seeing them. That, that, that's that got to be a weird experience for her as well. Yeah. Uh, and well, so ironically is that she, when she started, like, okay, like her first hour, you know, was confusing because she's being followed and she's looking back like, you know, who are you or, you know what I mean? Or talking to the cameraman. But after that, Ever since then, like, she's just been on and running. Like, she's very much comfortable with the camera crew and filming. And what was filming like for for you to have those cameras in your face from the time that you get out until, you know, even still? Does it take a while for you to get used to it and, I mean, drop your guard down and, and say things that you wish you wouldn't have? I mean, that happens to me all the time, but I can hit stop and, you know, re-record it. You You won't be able to do that. So what's it like for you? Uh, for me, it, uh, initially, it was surreal. The reason why it was surreal is because, you know, I was told that, you know, the first day I walk out them doors, is, yeah, I'm going to have cameras on me. And then every every day, basically moving forward. And up until that time, I was not ever filming anything. But I also know that I always loved entertainment. And I also already know that I loved acting and just different things as far as in the entertainment world. So I was comfortable walking out them doors. But I knew that it was going to take time. You know, I was going to make mistakes as far as, like, how you just said, how you can um, you can pause and you can go back, but I can't. So when I look back, you know, you live and you learn on on how to carry yourself on camera. But it, it it's it's fun for me. Like, I love it Okay. as far as the camera. Well, you have a great manager. Uh, I talked with Ebony a lot, oh, and yeah. um, she's been very helpful, very accommodating. And she told me that you're working on some things – at the moment. So I want to kind of talk about them and let's spotlight some of the good things that are going on in your life right now. One of your biggest passions is music. So I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about what kind of music you're working on. Are you doing an album? Like tell the fans a little bit more about that. Oh yes. I'm currently working on an album. Um, I'm currently working on R and B and hip hop albums. Um, things been moving good. Like we just left on tour. We went out there to Cali. We shut it down. So much love out there. My manager been busting our ass out here. So everything been good. We also working on the, our clothing. That should be dropping soon. 
What kind of what kind of items are going to be in the clothing? Uh, uh, glasses, pants, shirts, t-shirts, book bags, everything. We just trying to embody everything at one time and come correct. You know, I don't want. I didn't ever want to rush anything. I just came home, but I didn't been. I feel like I didn't been out for some years. You know how <laughs> everything has just been coming at one time, and but everything haven't been overwhelming, and I just been able to be patient. Um. I also been doing a lot of motivational speaking, a lot of motivational speaking. Like that's one of my biggest passions. Like I don't care how much money I make. I don't care about a show or anything when it comes down to the fact, like if I can never go back to the juveniles or like the, the elementaries or the middle schools, because I know how it was for me, you know, being young, like you don't, you don't, most of the time you don't see somebody that really, this is where I came from. I, I started all this from in prison. You know what I mean? That should give anybody the hope to know like I'm I'm eye level with you man and you can do anything that you're trying to do period because I didn't been even though I didn't been on we tv we me and my manager we didn't been elevating in other directions that doesn't even didn't have anything to do with we tv you know yeah so what kind of groups so, have you found most easy to talk to that you've spoken in front of so far what kind of audiences I would say like the fifth and sixth graders Okay. Them was the most easiest. Like I went out there to um, elementary notorious, notorious, notorious. I'm pronounce it pronunciating it wrong, but I went out there to the elementary in, in, in Cali, and like they had a they field day. They was on their last days of school. They had a picnic, and I was just able to out there to just interact with them. You know what I mean? Go race them. Go play football with them. Go talk to them. Walk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Them. Them is the ones that I. I relate to more now when you were younger, six, seven, eight, nine years old, like I can talk to you and I don't mind because like I said, I was, I was your age too. But you know, as far as them comprehending some things is a different story. What's the theme um, of your message though? Is it more about avoiding mistakes or like, what are you telling them? My whole theme is, is that is is your emotion. You know, I, I really feel like when you a kid, you go through so much stuff at home. You go through so much things that don't have anything to do with school or anything with, to do with a social life. But the things that you go through personally within yourself at home, that's, you carry that throughout everything else. That, that dictates your attitude. You know, that, that dictate why you're not listening to this teacher right now or that dictate why you being distracted right now. And I think a lot of times, like, people don't, don't really, you know, ask, like, what's, what's really going on. Like, mm -hmm. you just feel like somebody acting out or they making these decisions. But sometimes, you know, you're going through some things. So I just wanted them to know that at the end of the day, the little kid, the little girl, the little boy that's sitting next to you feel the same way that you feel because most times you feel individualized. You feel like nobody's understand, so I don't have to say nothing. Nobody don't relate, so I don't have to say nothing. And I really wanted to tap into that. Did you have feelings like that growing up that, yes. that, that you had to deal with? Yes. Like for me growing up, you know, it was rough. You know, I done went through custody. I done went through just different things. Um, as far as the living arrangements, as far as, you know, being separated from my mom young, you know, just different things. So I'm going through so much stuff from protective custody, I mean, protective services trying to come and just different things. And then I'm supposed to be in class, what, paying attention? Like yeah. my mind was so much, my mind was everywhere else. You know what I mean? I'm trying to worry. I'm wondering if I'm finna go eat or if I'm finna be took away from my mom. Or if, if when I leave home, if is everybody going to be okay? You know what I mean? The the weight of the world at such a young age. And I feel like a lot of kids go through it. I, oh, definitely. Now, was your dad not in your life? Yeah, my dad was in my life. He just stayed in another state. Okay. So he, he wasn't in, he wasn't in so your day-to-day -day life? No, he wasn't in my day-to-day -day life as a as a child. And how how has your relationship with your parents evolved, like, till now? Oh, I have a great relationship with my mom and my dad. My mom, me and my mom are very close. We've always been close, and me and my dad. Um, you know, we didn't went through our hiccups, but as as time go, go on, like, we, you know, get through it and move forward. And everybody's all, they all support me, and I try to support them in, in everything that they got going on because, you know, as a child, you want to you wanna give back to your parents. You want to be able to make sure they don't got to work no more. You know, they don't got to want no more. Mm hmm you know, so that's always been my my whole passion. It's just that when I was younger, 
I, I went about it the wrong way. I went about it in the streets. I'm trying to provide for my family, but it didn't cost me. If you could change one thing about your life right now, looking back, what would that one thing be? Is there is there a one specific moment? Sometimes people don't have one specific moment. Hmm. I don't. I would want to change some things about my life, but I don't think that I want to change anything about my life. If that makes sense, because I honestly feel like I, you know, I would fear that if the slightest thing changed, that my life, then my life would be different today. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and so. I'm I'm okay with where I'm at today, and I and I always know like for instance, you know I went to prison for two years, and honestly I ain't never I ain't gonna sit here and act, act like I ever been a saint, you feel me? But then when I just went to prison, I didn't do anything, but I learned at that moment like I had learned that it doesn't take you to not to do nothing. You know what I mean? You know, like you, it ain't about trouble looking for you or you looking for trouble. Like sometimes some things can happen, but then what are you going to do in that moment? And and in one of the worst times of my life, I was blessed. I started filming. Yeah. So if I wouldn't have never got locked up for something I didn't do, then I wouldn't have been started filming. Then I wouldn't have been out here being able to do most of the things that I'm doing now. Have, are you working so a, can, like a, besides the appearances and such, do you have like, do you have another job, a second career kind of situation? No, I don't. I don't have no nine to five right now. I've been filming. I've been um, getting rid of the music. I've been. You're preparing to be very my busy. Whole, my documentary. Yeah. Huh? Oh, I said you're preparing to be very busy with a music yes. and clothing line coming out at the same time. Yes, man. I'm working on a, docu- a documentary, too. About your life or about a different topic? Yeah. No, just about my life. So we're going to make it into, um, I'm going to do the book. I'm going to do the movie of it. So it's been love, man. It's been, it's been hella love. And, and my whole thing is I'm just trying to stay so busy. I'm trying to stay so focused, so busy. And until everything pays off, you know what I mean? And when I say pay off, I mean like my passion, like always my passion is to lighten the load for those around me. So when I be in the positions that I'm, seeing myself to be in in the future i want those around me to be able to be to be more comfortable man to take the stress and all that stuff away so when i be able to open up these different businesses and do these different things i want to be able to lighten the load you are not just in it for you is what you're saying you're in it to make everybody around you have a better life exactly now when i say everybody around me not just like my family like those around me in this world you know to make people, even strangers' lives, better. Exactly. With your message, you know, you, you with my message, with the businesses that I put out there, I don't want to be able to be. I don't want people being denied from different jobs or being played because they still because other people being greedy don't want to pay. You You know, these different things. Man, that's how I grew up. That's how I see my my parents grow up struggling. Mm-hmm. So if I can get in a position to to lighten the load, it's, it's easy. If you a billionaire, there ain't no reason why you can't help nobody. What you going to do with a billion dollars? <laughs> right. You know, why not? There's too many people struggling here. Yeah. You was blessed. Bless somebody else. Those are great words, Michael. On our show, one of our favorite questions to ask is about your encounters with fans. And I'm sure that you have been approached in... Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> small Michigan town and all that, you know, it's not like you're among many celebrities who probably are the celebrity in your town. So what encounters can you tell us about with your fans that have left a lasting mark on you? Man, I have so many different encounters. Like anytime, like I didn't been through like eight, eight different states now. And I, I ain't gonna say I was surprised, but I never gave it too much thought. But, like, it's been so much love everywhere I go, man, no matter if it's the airport, no matter if it's at the store, if, I'm, if it's in the street. Like, I didn't, I didn't even been into it. Somebody didn't even hit, hit my car. And people what? didn't stop. Like, um, you know, Michael, this, this, and this. Michael, how you doing? Like, I'm in the middle of a car accident right now. You, you trying to ask for the hard crap. But um, one, of the most, one, of, one of the most memorable ones was I had a meet and greet. And it was thundering real bad. 
a lot of rain. And one of my fans, she came from 70 miles away just to come see me. She went through all that just to come see me. And and at that moment, I was just realized the love, you know, you, you, you see me on TV and, you know, you're going to state your opinion or whatever. But for you to want to come 60, 70 miles away right. in that type of weather just to get a hug or just to say, you know, get a picture. And I just made it, I made it memorable for her, too, because I basically spent majority of my time with her just because she came that far, you know? Have you ever had any awesome. encounters that are weird or kind of creepy or anything like that? Well, I mean, it's not a weird encounter, but when I had, I'm, I remember I went up there to the uh, uh, elementary and, you know, I was, I asked the kids, you know, if they had any questions, like, you know, to come up. So one of the, the little girls, she asked me, she was like, is it true that they have shanks in prison? I was like, she like 11 years old. I'm like, what? <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm very much honest. You know, I am very much honest with kids, especially little boys, because I don't ever want them to think that it's no type of joke, no yeah. type of game, no type of exception for you, because it's not. But overall, those type of, oh, when I came from uh, Atlanta, I was in the airport, and it was like 10 females, that was on a girl's trip and I was in line trying to get my flights in order. Uh -huh. And then I heard, a, I heard somebody call my name, but they yelled it. And then when I looked around, I guess they were trying to see if I, if it was really me. Sure. Testing when I looked the around, waters. I didn't see nobody. And then all I hear is a whole bunch of females yelling and run up to me. They was from Alabama telling <laughs> me they love the show. And they love me and this and this. And I took pictures. So that was the most memorable moment. Now, you, I, one of the things I thought about when you were talking is you mentioned elementary kids. Do you think the elementary kids have seen the show? Like, do they know who you yeah. are? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of kids have seen it. They'll tell me about it. Um, I didn't interact with like people that I know. They kid, they'd be like, my kids watch you. You know what I mean? They're like, well, how old is your kid? And they'll tell me like 11, 12. Yeah, I would not be letting you know. I would not be letting my kids watch that show. Sorry. <laughs> There's yeah, just too much right. too yeah. much things that they don't need to be exposed to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that just surprises me that they're that young and watching the show. It's like, where are the parents? And why are the parents right, saying, it, yeah, they watch it? What's wrong with you? They all watching it together. <laughs> oh, man. That's got to be an uncomfortable room. But you'll be room. surprised. Yeah, you would be surprised with what kids would be watching these days. Well, that's why, as parents, we have to do a really good job to police that kind of activity and monitor it and right. be on top of what they're viewing. So, mm -hmm. Kind of getting away from all this TV talk, when you're not on filming or working on some of these business projects, what do you enjoy doing? Like, what, what, do, you, what do you enjoy doing in your free time? One of the things that I love to do is write. Like, even before everything, I used to write, like, movies and scripts and books. And um, that's kind of like my, that's kind of, that's my release for me personally. And I like to just spend a, as much time with my kids. Um, no matter if they have to come to my city or I come to theirs, I'll be wanting to, you know, continue to make sure that they know that I'm right here, mm -hmm. you know, and continue to, you know, do things that I didn't get to do as a child or their mother. Or you may catch me, um, you know, in the gym playing basketball. That's another release for me. Are you currently writing your book? Because you mentioned the book earlier. And now that I learned you're a writer, are you working on that currently? Well, I'm, I have somebody else working on my documentary, my documentary mm -hmm. with me as far as with the book, as far as with the movie. But me personally on the side, like I've been, you know, been writing, you know, my own different books. Um my own different hood novels and just different things and different scripts as well. Cause I plan on pushing that to, into different um, production companies and just different things to be on the other end of the entertainment world. Well, at this point being on television, you've certainly broken one of the barriers that most people can't get through is getting noticed. So you definitely don't have mm -hmm. that problem anymore. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, 
like I say, it's it's, it's surreal, but like it, it's something that I always wanted. You know what I mean? It's just the decisions that I made kept costing me to be in jail, so I could never be, you know, being trying to be the best version of myself. But like you just said, um, being able to have your foot in the door, that's that was like the biggest thing. Like you have to have your foot in the door. And I and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, I was confident enough that if I put my foot in the door, then I could take off from there with anything else that I wanna do. Yeah, and you know, if things cost you in the short term, it sounds like they're gonna pay off in the long term with cha- yeah. changing the mindsets yeah. of young people and influencing those to not make same mistakes you did. I think that's wonderful, Michael. So I congratulate you on that. Yes, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I know you've done a few Instagram lives, so I know you have an Instagram. Do you want to promote your social media channels before we uh, let you go for this week? Oh, yes, yeah, most definitely. It's the official Millie. Follow me on Instagram on official Millie. Follow me on Facebook under Michael Simmons. There is some fake pages out there with me on there. So when you type my name in, just capitalize the M, capitalize the S. Um, follow my manager, um, Cali Capital. Her Instagram is Cali, Cali, Cali Capital. Also, verify collection. And just continue to stay tuned. Yeah, we got For anything that music and clothes and a lot to look forward to. Yes, yes, man. This month, these next few months, it's, things going to just be dropping back to back to back to back to back. Oh, yeah, my show airs tonight. So make sure y'all tune in, everybody. Y'all want to know what's been going on, what's been taking place, and follow along with the story. Nine o'clock. Nine Eastern, eight Central. Yep. Um, now, I want to know, are you going to come back here in six weeks whenever this show's over? I think I heard it was six weeks. I don't know. But can we get an update from you then? Oh, yes, most definitely. I most definitely will be back with full updates. I always back lo- vibing with you. Yeah, I always love going back to the cast afterwards. In fact, I don't know if you've heard, but Lizzie from the same season was on the show, and she's also doing an update show with us once that uh, conclusion of episodes airs. So um, this is That's the awesome. place. This is the place to be if you want to get That's awesome. <laughs> you know some updates. <laughs> That's awesome. So hopefully, yeah. you'll come back with us uh, with some more material that you can promote and share as well. So we, we're looking forward to hearing what you're going to be working on in the next couple of months. Yes, man. And I appreciate you all having me today. You mean a lot to me. Just, I know that y'all had contacted me like a, like a week ago while I was on tour. I just appreciate y'all being patient with me, man, and just believing in me, really. Like, I, I'm grateful for it. Thanks, Michael, very much. And we do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to follow us on our private Facebook group, Sharpie Nation. Just uh, say, I want to join, and I'll let you in. It's where we discuss all of our episodes and give you some exclusive content. So be sure to join there. Also, we're on Twitter at Fan Counters Live. And if you want to suggest a guest, you can do that by emailing hello at fancounters.com. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. And I hope you have a good week. We'll talk to you again next Friday. This was a podcast from the Podfix Network. Check out more shows like it at oddfixnetwork.com.